the imperative mood in English is a verb form used to make a demand, a request, or give advice and instructions. Being one of the three grammatical moods, the imperative mood is also known as providing commands because they imply a second person subject you, but they do not include you or any other subject. Essentially, commands in the imperative express a demand or a suggestion, telling the reader what should be or should not be. Verbs in the imperative do not follow regular conjugations, and instead, they take the infinitive form. So the subjects of the sentences are implicitly in the second person pronoun you. But you is almost never mentioned, and this makes the imperative one of the easiest to use and understand because the verbs simply stay in the infinitive form, showing a command and not changing at all. Some examples are read this sentence, clean the room, walk the dog, leave now, go back, get out. In the imperative, all phrases are demands, and they refer to the second person pronoun you, but it's never actually written because it doesn't need to. Also, to emphasize the intensity of each demand, we can use an exclamation point, but sometimes it can seem too dramatic, depending on the context. Additionally, some demands may be rude or abrupt, and in that case, we can soften the tone by using the word please, such as get back to me as soon as possible, which seems a bit rude, especially in a professional setting. So, we can use the word please. Please get back to me as soon as possible. To make a negative construction, in the imperative, we use the auxiliary verb do and the negative word not by placing them before the verb that gives the command. Do not can be contracted to don't, which is also a perfect form. Let's reuse some of the previous examples. Do not read the sentence. Don't read the sentence. Do not clean the room. Don't clean the room. Do not walk the dog. Don't walk the dog. Do not leave now. Don't leave now. Moreover, the imperative can also be in the first person plural, which is in the we pronoun. This case suggests that the speaker and the receiver do something together. They're expressed in the imperative with a combination of the word let and the first person plural object pronoun us. Together, let us makes let's, but they have a difference in speech. Let's makes informal suggestions and invitations, but let us has a more formal tone and a specific emphasis. For instance, let's go to the park shows a casual command, but let us begin the meeting has a more literal and deliberate tone, and we can think of it as allow us. Allow us to begin the meeting. To make a negative out of let's or let us, we add the negative not after let's or let us and before the verb. Let's not eat here. Let us not forget about the lesson. Another concept is question tags, which are short questions added to the end of a command to specify the context. The function of question tags is to make a demand sound less forceful and more like a polite request. Some question tags can be, will you, won't you, would you, and they're put at the end of commands. Some examples are, open the window, will you, pass me the salt, won't you, turn the music down, would you. Question tags can also be used with let's and let us, but in that case, they're different from the second person, so they're very, very uncommon. Because let's is more informal, its most typical question tag is shall we, placed at the end of a command. Let's go to the park, shall we? The same thing can be done with let us. But, because it is not a contraction, it's more formal, so it's rare with question tags preceding something that is context appropriate, like won't you? Let us come in, won't you? Both let's and let us are perfectly acceptable for the first person plural we even when there are two or more subjects. At last, it's important to understand the difference between the imperative and indicative. Imperative sentences express demands and requests or give advice and instructions, while indicative sentences express a fact. For most verbs, the imperative form is the same as the second person present indicative, such as run which is an imperative command that can be indicative without changing form, as in, you run. Both in the imperative and indicative, run stays run and doesn't change. But there is an exception with the verb to be, because in the indicative, it's conjugated in the second person, becoming are, and in the imperative, it keeps the infinitive form. Be early 
is a command in the imperative, but you are early is a factual statement in the indicative. This is how the imperative mood works in English.